In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. <laughs> well, that's the whole story, so that's the end of my story. <laughs> but uh, I'm happy to tell you that, that uh, children in church still learn that song today. And I'm thrilled. They sang it at 10 o'clock this morning. But it's a wonderful song, but it doesn't tell you quite the whole story. Because you see, Zacchaeus was a tax collector, and that, that means that he was a collaborator with the Romans. And he was uh, one of the ways that they installed their very harsh and difficult rule on the good people of Jerusalem. Uh, certainly, he was not welcome in any of the religious services around there and he had no part in the in the spiritual life of his city um, and you really can't blame the the other people of jerusalem all that much because you see when they went into captivity uh, they, the, they they brought other people to live in their houses and in Samaria, and so when they finally came back, there was just a big mess of different kind of people around, and they were trying to figure out, okay, what does it mean to be a Jewish person today? And they, they decided that part of the way that you had, in order to be 100%, you had to have gone to captivity and come back. And then another thing that was very important was that you had dietary restrictions, that you just couldn't eat anything. And, and there were all a lot of restrictions. And another one was that you do not associate with bad people. And, <clears throat> you know, it's very important the company you keep, even today. And if, if you're a parent, I'm sure you've tried to teach your children the importance of keeping good company and having good friends. It's very important, am I right? And so you can't blame the good people of Jerusalem too much for trying to not associate with Zacchaeus because they didn't want anybody to bring them down. And so here's this holy man calling himself the son of God who didn't seem to care about all their rules. They were looking for the Messiah, but he didn't seem to be who they were looking for because he even had the audacity to associate with sinners. Sinners! And like Zacchaeus, one of the most despised and the lowest, and so Jesus didn't make sense for them. Most people thought that tax collectors and others had no chance at all for eternal life. But Jesus was saying something different. He knew that eternal life would be God's gift, not something that you earn. Jesus knew that no amount of eating the right foods or keeping the right company would by itself be enough to achieve eternal life. What Jesus wanted instead was a change of heart. He talked about having compassion for sinners and not shunning them. A number of years ago, I was a chaplain for um, the local hospital. And as such, I would often get calls to the ER sometimes in the middle of the night, and sometimes when the patient had just expired. And, and 
there were many occasions where uh, it was certainly unexpected. Uh, the family was in there grieving, and, uh, and, and the person who had died had never made time in his life for Jesus. He just hadn't gotten around to it. And the family had lots of questions about that for the chaplain. And it's, it's all very sad. And so it, it, it's important to, to realize that being a Christian is not just getting baptized and checking off that, but living with Jesus gives you a richer life right now not just after you die. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So I would ask this morning, what, what is most important in your life? What, def what would you say defines your life? I think it changes as we age, you know? We start out, we graduate from college. That's a big deal. And then we get a job, and that's a big deal. And then we raise a family. I mean, so all of these are kind of ways that things that define our life. But what about your Christian faith? What in your life is really important? Important enough to deserve your time as well as your money. Our plates are usually full of responsibilities and challenges. And like Zacchaeus, who was apparently short of nature, stature, we all have uh, physical and emotional and monetary limitations. And sometimes life doesn't always seem fair. Like Zacchaeus, we might say, I realize that I haven't always done what is right. And yet here is Jesus who wants to be a part of my life. Wow, how wonderful is that? And in response, Zacchaeus was very generous with his treasure. He was able to recognize the abundance of living a new life in Jesus Christ. Now this is in sharp contrast to the parable of the rich young ruler. Do you remember the story? What do I need to do? And Jesus said, give away and all of your things and follow me. He couldn't turn loose of his treasure. It's like Zacchaeus says, Lord, don't just come into my house. Come into my heart. And therefore, Zacchaeus agrees to give generously to the poor and promises to repay liberally any past discretions. In spite of his being a sinner, when Jesus came into his heart and into his life, it was easy to be generous. And so Zacchaeus teaches us something that's very important. Jesus didn't tell him something like, hey, Zach, the synagogue needs a new roof. Let's, let's, let's get a new roof for that. You see, Zacchaeus didn't give because the synagogue needed something. Zacchaeus gave out of gratitude for what God had done for him. Another way to describe this is stewardship of abundance, which is our theme for today. And you and I are just like Zacchaeus. Being generous is not about supporting our church, which we love very much, because it has needs. No, it's about nourishing our spiritual lives. We give not because the church needs it, but because we need it. We need it for our own spiritual growth. Like it said in the reading from Habakkuk, the righteous live by their faith. We're all sinners who depend on God's grace. And as recipients of this grace, we all have the opportunity to pass it on to others. It's like Richard Rohr said, 
Worshiping Jesus is rather harmless and risk-free. Following Jesus changes everything. It's so much easier to come into this beautiful space and worship God on Sunday mornings, beautiful music, than it is to live a Christian life during the week. What would you have done if you had been Zacchaeus and the Lord announced that he was coming to your house? What would you do if you discovered that the Son of God wanted a closer relationship with you? Would you welcome him or turn him away or just ignore him? Would you have time in your life for him? Would you make space in your budget for him? Well, the wonderful news this morning is that Jesus is calling you by name. He does want to come into your home. Thanks to the grace of God, he wants to come into your heart and live there forever. In the words of today's collect or prayer for the day, may we run without stumbling to obtain God's heavenly promises. May we love him, serve him, invite him into our hearts in this life so that we will be happy knowing and loving and serving him in the life that has no end. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.